Jumei, tell me something about China's anti-colonialism. We did this in class today. I don't know. Hmm. You didn't and oppose. T pay attention. Didn't and oppose. T you? Sorry. That's okay. I will summarize it for you. That sounds great. First of all, let in oppose. S start from death of Stalin in 1953. Before his death, there was a treaty between China and USSR, which ensured equal and cooperative relationship between China and the USSR. However, Stalin simply betrayed China. For example, by forcing China to repay a loan with a high interest rate. Thus, inevitably, under Stalin's regime, tension between Beijing and Moscow increased. Yes, I know about this. But why is this related to China and Oppo's s and colonization? Sino-Soviet split is important because split between USSR and China motivated Mao and CCP to regard themselves, but not USSR. To be the successful model of anti-imperialism and anti-colonization, they believed that Maoist China was the voice of true proletarian revolution. Wasson and Oppo's, t there any positive changes between China and USSR after Stalin's death? Well, there was expected to be some positive changes, but successor of Stalin, Nikita Khrushchev, and his regime even catalyzed China and Oppo's. Est association with USSR and intensified belief in Maoist communism. Now I know why China suddenly started actively supporting independence of colonized countries, and it also supported emergence of new nations in mid 1950s. Right. So, specifically, what did China do to liberate colonized nations and denounce anti-imperialism? Oh, before talking about specific examples. Jimmy, you should also remember that PRC had two goals regarding colonization. What are those? First is to oust the Soviet Union from the leadership of international revolution, and second is to undermine Western imperialism by supporting. Oh, by supporting anti-colonialist movements, right? Yes. Do you get it now? Yes. Okay. Then let him drop us. Let's talk about what PRC did specifically and evaluate whether they were successful or not. In 1953, Zhou Enlai successfully brought the Korean War to an end. Also, China engaged in Arab-Israel conflict by supporting anti-West states. Doesn't that mean that China's anti-colonization was successful? Nope. Be careful. We didn't end up as. T look at the other side yet. Analysis of something should always quote in evaluations of two sides. Even though China succeeded during Korean War and supported people during Arab-Israel conflict, they failed to pull the emerging and non-aligned nations to their sides. They failed. Why? There were five main reasons why China couldn't be successful: distance, resources, expatriate, cultural revolution, and China's policy in Tibet. Distance and resources are pretty straightforward. It means that China lacked resources, and China and emerging nations were far away from each other. Right? And China's forcible seize of power in Tibet was an irony to China's anti-colonization. You are right, Jimmy. Wow. I think now you know more than me. I just guessed. Thank you anyway. But I don't get why Chinese expatriate and cultural revolution are also one of the reasons. Oh, Chinese expatriate! You know that after 1949, even more Chinese people were living outside China, right? They were different from other migrants because they were full Chinese by law and had their distinctive culture. Also, they were loyal to their regime. Because of this loyalty and their lucrative business in local market. Many local residents hated the Chinese. Eventually, this led to a massacre of Chinese in Indonesia in 1959. Wow, that's kind of interesting. And what about the Cultural Revolution? First of all, during the Cultural Revolution, Premier Zhou Enlai was declared politically suspected in China and thus was forced to leave the government. China was greatly affected by absence of his experience and strategies in foreign affairs. Also, as you already expected, 
countries that wanted to have diplomatic relations with China at that time were forced to accept the supremacy of Maoist thought. In addition, Red Guards burned all the accumulated foreign office records, and foreign embassies were destroyed with many of their staff insulted or arrested. To me it seems like Cultural Revolution was the biggest reason why China failed to attract the emerging nations. Yes indeed. Oh my god. I and Oppo's am late to the meeting. I should go now. Have fun with Ab History Jimmy. And see you tomorrow.